welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Business Edition. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time. Well, if you need a website, look at A2 Hosting. This is one of the affiliates that I have listed on my affiliates page. Switch to Linux.com forward slash affiliates. This is where I am hosting my clients from. And if you watched the stream last night, uh, we were looking at alternatives. And uh, there is an open source alternative to cPanel called ISP Config. And I did find after the stream last night that if you head on over into um, uh, blah, 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 whatever, um, if you head on, no, oh, is that it? Uh, I gotta find it again. Uh, what you can do is you can go ahead and select from your system Debian already configured with ISP config. So if you are wanting to try out that open source ISP config, then uh, you can actually actually get a server from A2 Hosting that already has it set up and configured on Debian. So that's actually something cool, and I might be looking into that, or I'll look into a couple other options to test out ISP config. Stay tuned on that. But anyway, if you are needing a website, uh, tlm.li forward slash A2H. And now let's get on to the news. This article here, it was either going to be Sillyville or business, but I decided to put into business. Now, if you guys remember the old, old web legend that KFC, they changed your name from Kentucky Fried Chicken to KFC because they were growing mutant, artificially lab-grown chickens and selling those. And it was this giant conspiracy theory and everyone was wearing these tinfoil hats and saying, don't order from KFC anymore because it's getting lab meat. Well, according to them, that is now something they're looking at doing. So, so much has the future changed that before that was bad, now this is good because KFC is now working with a lab in Russia, Moscow, Russia, to 3D bioprint chicken nuggets. <laughs> Officially, from their own site. Meat of the future. KFC and 3D bioprinting solutions use a bioprinter to produce KFC nuggets. <laughs> July 16th, Moscow, Russia. KFC is taking the next step in its innovative concept of creating a restaurant of the future by launching the development of innovative 3D bioprinting technology to create chicken meat in cooperation with 3D bioprinting solutions and research laboratories. Guys... I may not eat at KFC again, at least not for a long time. No, this is bad. This is bad news. They go into the whole thing. This is all praise from KFC about 3D printed bio meat. Ah. Run. What's run? Microsoft. Oh, God. No. We have to run from KFC's bioprinted meat to Microsoft's Windows 10. Well, we have a new bug that causes internet connectivity problems. Technically, it doesn't. What this bug actually does is it interferes with the icon in the lower corner to say you're on the internet. You can still actually get on and get on the internet with this bug. But the problem is many applications, it turns out, looks for the notification status that is reported by the, uh, by the little status icon down there in the system tray. So if the little status icon in the system tray says there's no network, even if there's a network, applications on the computer think there's no network. You still have the internet. So I originally looked at this and said, well, that's good, Microsoft. How are you going to fix that if you get your system breaks? Well, it actually turns out that it can fix itself because, again, it is still on the Internet. It's just that the applications can't see the Internet. Presumably, Microsoft still can. So you can read all about it. Things, in certain, uh, things that are certain in life. Death, taxes, and Windows 10 updates that cause bugs. Of course. Once again, Microsoft has acknowledged a problem in the May 2020. When's the last Windows update we had that did not actually have bugs? Should we have like uh, like uh, one of those little um, you know number of days since injuries? We should have number of Windows updates since injuries, and it'll just be be etched in stone of zero because it'll never move beyond that apparently. Which that's what happens when you fire your whole QA team. Oh Lord. Anyway, moving on. Pandora wants you to talk to the ads. I'll talk to the ads. You It won't be Christian words. Um, so say yes to hear more content. 
Would you like to hear more about our new Akira coming up? Oh yes, I want to hear all about the Akira. I'm not listening to Pandora to hear music. But apparently Pandora thinks that you will say yes. I want to see how many people actually say yes. I want to hear more about the ad rather than going on to my next song. Do you guys use Pandora? What's up with this? Uh, good, bad, but anyway, Pandora wants you to talk to its ads. The company is expanding its on voice control features today with a beta launch of voice activated ads. After initially testing the feature last year, only listeners who already hear ads will be offered a new voice activated ones, which ask the listener to agree to hear additional brand content and they have to say yes to initiate. Is this? Okay, let, let's put on our tinfoil hats. I should have brought a tinfoil hat over here today, man. We, we, we needed this a couple times already today. My lands. Anyway, so. Remember the old scam where they're just trying to get you to say yes so they can record your yes for the purpose of putting your yes on other things? So here's a system that's feeding you ads. You have to say yes. Now, is this you have to say yes to initiate to get to your music or can I say, uh, die ad, never hear from me again and then you'll go on to your song or will it just sit there and keep asking, say yes to continue? Say yes to continue. Say yes to continue. Now, I'm not letting you go until you say yes. Say yes to continue. Say yes. Come on, man. Come on, buddy. Um, so with that, uh, with that, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just some, some weird and, and shocking thing to collect people saying yes for odd and nefarious business plans. He said yes to, to the thing that we had on our ad. Therefore, we have his full consent. What if you have a friend in the car, you just got some Pandora going in the background, it's playing switch to some ad, your friend says, you want to go, uh, you go left, right? You say yes. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I don't know, all sorts of fun stuff. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, you can kind of see uh, a couple corrections down there. Oh, one of them today. Updated to reflect that only free and plus users have to watch ads to request a specific song. Um, so free and plus users apparently are impacted by that. All right. Newly discovered flaw in fast chargers can cause connected devices to go up in flames. <laughs> it's 2020. Everything's going up in flames. So uh, bad power attacks, uh, bad power attack corrupts chargers firmware. So these are issues inside of particular um, a particular brand of USB chargers. And what they do is they promote that they're going to charge the phone much faster than your typical charge. Well, how does it do that? Well, there is firmware built into the charger and built into the device, which will only allow a certain amount of current to come through. If more current goes through, any of you electricians will know what's going on, particularly if you work with DC power, you cannot have certain gauges of wires if you're doing certain tasks, it will actually overheat and potentially cause a little bit of a fire. So this USB cable, you plug it in, it bypasses the firmware set to uh, regulate the amount of uh, current coming through. It overrides the current and sets your phone board on fire. So yay, we have fast chargers that burn your device down. Guys, just go with slow chargers. Actually, slow chargers keep your battery alive faster. Fast charging a battery is not nearly as good for it as slow charging a battery. It's great if you're you're almost out of juice and oh, I just need a fast charger right now to get me through the next couple hours. It's way better to keep your phone charged up on a much slower trickle at, at better times to do it. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of that. So anyway, uh, that is uh, that is uh, a little bit about that. So be aware of those. All right, two related phones, both for, uh, two related articles, both from um, Android Police. So, of course, the key story we're going to talk about is this AT and T situation. But it turns out that T-Mobile is going to be doing the same thing. So, AT and T. Uh, we'll get into the AT and T one in a second. But T-Mobile will soon require VoLTE on all phones as of January of 2021. So, we're talking only six months away. If you're on Sprint than, uh, uh, or T-Mobile, I guess. Um, I keep on saying Sprint, T-Mobile. Uh, so if you're on T-Mobile, you have to have your phone has to support VO over LTE, which I believe the Nexus 5X does. I looked into that. Although there's some conflicting information, the firmware updates are such that I should be just fine because I'm on Mint Mobile, which uses T-Mobile. Uh, but regardless, 
they are actually cutting it back in only six months. So that's actually kind of problematic. They're a lot more upfront and more friendly with their message, unlike AT&T, which basically actually sent out, AT&T basically sent out a, an email that basically said, hey, if you don't upgrade your phone, uh, you're just not gonna use any service. And a lot of people are rushing off to AT&T to buy new phones. And so um, AT&T is scaring customers into buying new phones with a misleading email. And by the way, uh, by the way, um, Newer phones generally aren't affected, but you gotta check out which phone you have. So amid an economy crushing pandemic, uh, we gotta, of course, the economy's crushing. Okay. The economy is crushing, but it's not because of a pandemic. It's because, never mind. I don't wanna get political today. Um, AT&T decided that now is a good time to send a scaremongering email to many of its customers claiming their phone is, quote, not compatible with the new network. You need to replace it to continue receiving service, end quote. The email conveniently omits that this message is regarding a change that will not take place until February of 2020. So you guys in AT&T, you have an extra two months. Or excuse me, an extra 18 months. Wow, extra two months? Extra 18 months. Um, providing only a link that calls out this char this change linked to decommissioning AT&T's legacy 3G network. Tone and language of the email make it sound like customers should buy a new phone via the carrier straight away. It advertises that AT&T makes getting a new device online easy, of course, um, detailing various free and fast shipping options. <sighs> this is why I like ad blocker. Like I should be running an ad blocker on this because an ad just changed positions that made me lose where I was. <sighs> All right. Yeah, I should just go ahead and throw an ad blocker on this. Anyway, um, getting a new device online is easy, detailing various fast free shipping options. Oh boy, free shipping on your new $1,000 smartphone. Even a tech savvy person could be easily confused by the email. It's easy to see how an elderly person might look at it and effectively get scared into purchasing a new phone immediately. Um, the notice is poorly worded that an AT&T subscriber asked if it was a scam at AT&T forums since they own relatively recent Galaxy S10e. Customers even agreed that it's even uh, likely not a genuine email. Even somebody pointed to a support page at AT&T link through the learn more button saying it's not until February 2020. So uh, let's see. We'll assume this is the, the link to the, to the text. We'll soon be upgrading our network to the latest technologies. These updates are to serve you better and bring faster speeds and greater reliability. But your device ending in blah is not compatible with the new network and you need to replace it to continue receiving service. Yeah, it, I love it when they change all of our networks to serve us better and then make us buy a new phone. No, no, no. Where are all of the, the environmentalist psychopaths beating down AT&T's door for pushing forth effects and changes that are actually going to cause a lot more e-waste? Interesting. Anyway, um, that is what AT&T and T-Mobile and the other news items are up to. Let me know your thoughts on all these in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.